Okay, yes, I know, Z690 mobile boards are old news, but they may not be old news for people who still want to save a buck when upgrading to Intel 13th gen. Then getting a last gen Z690 board can be a great deal right now, with Z690 boards being cheaper than ever, including today's subject, the MSI Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. And while it comes in both DDR4 and DDR5 flavors, the DDR5 version I have with me costs $240. So for that kind of price, is this still worth it in 2023? Well, let's talk about it. Starting off with the CPU power delivery, where MSI has included a solid 16 plus 1 plus 1 power phases rated at a maximum of 70 amps. That combined with the 248 pins is all rather on par for this price point. And let's be honest, no one really cares that much. Like, unless you're going to be really taking your CPU far when it comes to overclocking, this kind of thing won't affect too many people, and you won't be seeing any difference over more sophisticated VRM systems either. However, it doesn't mean that this system is impressive in its own right. Not only that, but it's also cool. While the VRM cooling doesn't look like much on the surface, it does manage to keep the power delivery system cool enough to sustain a CPU's high boost clocks. Then moving on to PC expansion, well, it's a pretty standard stuff for Z690, with a primary Gen 5 slot to additional physical 16x slots, which are electrically Gen 3 4x and Gen 3 1x respectively, and a tiny little baby 1x slot as well for the smallest expansion cards around. All pretty solid stuff, and again, what you expect from a good mid-range Z690 motherboard. board. And when it comes to the M.2 expansion, yep, you guessed it, it's also average and rather uninteresting. With the motherboard containing four M.2 connectors with all but one of them running at Gen 4 speeds. And what's also nice is that all four of them have a heat spreader of some. Even if these small pieces of metal MSI have included, aren't going to do too much cooling on the most demanding of drives. So okay, the power delivery situation is pretty much okay. The PC expansion and storage situation is also pretty much okay. So... What are the downsides? I know, it has to be the rear I.O., right? MSI myself really messed up here. But surprisingly, no. It's also solid, I guess. The motherboard does have seven USB Type A ports in total, and thankfully, only two of them are USB Gen 2, the rest being Gen 3 or faster. But thankfully, you also have a lightning fast 20 gigabit per second USB Type C port as well. Add to that both HDMI and DisplayPort for integrated graphics, 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi Fi 6C as standard, and a full array of audio options. Five audio jacks and optical spidiff, as opposed to some other companies who will go on unnamed. Named <coughs> Gigabyte. <coughs> you think that only having three audio options is acceptable in 2023? Well, guess what? It's not. So, at the end of the day, is that just it? Is it just the most average mobile board there is? Well, no, because there's actually one thing that sets it apart the stickers. And sure, the military design on them does kind of age this product and shows it was released before the war happened, but still, let's play dress up with a mobile board, shall we? Anyway, despite all of that silliness, while I was applying the stickers, I had took a good look at a mover board and realized I really didn't have much to complain about. Sure, it isn't some super high-end mover board, but for $240, what exactly can you expect? But the issue is that it is flanked on all sides with some serious competition from companies like ASUS and Gigabyte. But then there's something that truly sets this mover board apart. Something it has, or rather, something it doesn't have. The RGB. Like, it's something I didn't even notice at first, but there's literally no RGB on this mobile board at all. And the more I looked at it, the more I realized something. It's probably the most neutral looking and stealthy mobile board around right now. So for people who do want more of that stealth aesthetic and don't care about having a super loud PC that looks like a rave, this might be the pro to go for, because really there's so few alternatives out there. It's this perfectly balanced middle child of a motherboard. It has a super generic look to it, and I mean that in a good way, because it just appeals to everyone apart from people who just cannot live without having RGB in a PC, and it's also expensive enough that it has all the features you may require from a Z690 board, but also cheap enough that it doesn't scare people off. And as such, if you're in the mood for that middle of the road mobile board, then hey, it could be worse. And this mobile board does pretty much everything right it's allowed to do. So if you want to get it yourself, then the links to it are going to be down in the video description below. And while you're still here, maybe we'll switch out our Patreon, because even a single dollar month truly goes a long way. Down is going to find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.